A common question that gets asked as you're designing inside of Squarespace is what size should my images be? Does it even matter? It definitely does. If your images are too bulky, it is going to slow down your website as it loads, which is a ranking factor and something that search engines take into consideration as they're ranking your site. And so you want to make sure that your images aren't the reason that your website isn't getting ranked properly inside of Google. So in this video, we are going to talk about all the different types of images you may have on your Squarespace website and what size they should be, as well as how to properly prepare them before you load them up in your Squarespace website. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca from Rebecca Grace Designs, and I spend most of my time helping other Squarespace designers push past the limitations of the editor using code. So let's jump in. So when thinking about image size, there's two sizes you need to be concerned about. There's the width of the image, or I like to say the longest side of the image, and then there's the file size itself. So the width of the image is in pixels, and the file size is in kilobytes. Um, so when in doubt, sort of in a general situation, you want to use a width of 2,500 pixels on the longest side, and then an overall file size of no bigger than 500 kilobytes. This will help make sure that your images are not blurry, but that they're not making your page too large and slowing down the loading of your website. So when in doubt, if you're not really sure what size it should be, going with a width of 2,500 pixels and a file size of less than 500 kilobytes is a good sort of general rule of thumb. For banner images and backgrounds, these are images that span the whole site. So from one side to the other, these should have a width of around 2,500 pixels. You could go a little bit bigger to about 3,000 pixels if you have a very detailed image or for example, if you're a photographer or something like that that you're advertising your images, you may want to go slightly bigger so that they're nice and crisp and that they're not blurry on larger screens. But you don't need to go much bigger than 3000 pixels. Most professional images when you get them will be around 4000 to 6000 pixels, which is going to be way too large and slow down your site. So for images that span the whole width of the site, you really don't need to go larger than 3000 pixels, but you can stay closer to the 25 500 pixel mark. For image blocks and thumbnails, so this includes image blocks, product images, gallery images, blog thumbnails, social sharing images, and so on. These can be between 1500 pixels to 2000 pixels, depending on the size of the image. So if you figure a full width of your screen is around 3000 pixel for the image, then if your image block is only taking up about half of that, then you only need to be around 1500 pixels for it to not be blurry and still look nice and crisp on your screen. Next is icons. These are generally quite small on the site and depending on their size, you can go as small as 500 pixels. And finally, your browser icon. This is the icon that goes next to the tab on the site. These are super, super small, and so they can be between 100 to 300 pixels. Essentially, when you're thinking of image size, you want to make sure that your image is crisp, but that it's not going to slow down your site. So in order to do that, you can use any of these sizes. Again, when in doubt, you're looking at a size of 2,500 pixels, but more importantly, you don't want the file size to be more than 500 kilobytes. So even if you go a little bit larger than the 2,500 pixels, as long as the file size itself isn't larger than 500 kilobytes, and that will make sure that it's not going to slow down the loading of your web page. As a bonus quick tip, if you're using Canva, sometimes I've noticed that the graphic will look really good in Canva, but then when I export it and go to put it on my site, it's suddenly blurry. What I've found helps is if you export the image at twice the size you want it to be, and then on your computer, you can resize it to be the size that you want. I've found that this has helped make sure that the image stays crisp when you upload it to Squarespace. The final thing is to prepare your images. So it's not only important to think about the actual file size, but there's other things you can do to make sure that it's going to help with your SEO. 
So the first is to check the width and the file size. Again, the file size should be no larger than 500 kilobytes. If it is, you want to compress it. There's lots of tools online for free that can help you do this. Then once you have your compressed file, you want to rename the image using keywords. In Squarespace, if you don't add an alternate tag, the title will be pulled in as the metadata for that image. And so it's important to make sure that the title makes sense for the image, but also uses keywords that you want to rank for in Google. So now that you know how to prepare your images for Squarespace, they shouldn't affect your page loading speed. But if you found this video because your site is already loading slowly, then check out this next video where I talk about the biggest killer of page speed and what to do about it.